This is my dog Aspen. At age six, she tore her cranial cruciate ligament, CCL, which is like the ACL in a human. You couldn't tell anything was wrong when she was out running around, but after she would come in and lay down for a while, she'd be very stiff in her right rear leg. After meeting with a veterinary specialist and doing a ton of research online, I found out that the tibia plateau leveling operation, called TPLO, was supposedly the gold standard for fixing this issue in dogs who weighed over 40 pounds. So we chose to have it done, and I've regretted that decision ever since. So as it was explained to me, the femur sits on top of the tibia, and the tibia has a very steep angle that that bone is sitting on, and the CCL holds that femur in place. But when the CCL is torn, the femur starts sliding around. And when they do a TPLO, what they do is they make a circular cut in the bone of the tibia, reposition that where it's a flatter surface for the femur to rest on. Then they put a plate in to hold it all together while it heals, and hopefully this works out well, but in our case it did not. So as you can imagine, this is a pretty drastic operation, and here's what she looked like about a week before the operation. And unfortunately, I don't have any video showing her getting up out of bed being kind of lame. But she was not that bad, especially outside. You couldn't tell anything was wrong just when she would get up out of bed. And here's what she looked like right after the operation. So if you choose to have this operation done, even after watching this video, there will be quite a bit of swelling. They put a ton of staples in. This is the actual x-ray of the knee with the plate, with the bone repositioned. And here's what she walked like the day after surgery. So this is one week after the operation and the leg is much less swollen. The staples look pretty good. Looks like things are healing up quite well. This is how she was walking one week after surgery. Not very good. Here's two weeks after surgery. She actually got quite good at going on three legs instead of using that leg, but we would force her to walk slowly and use that leg and still wasn't very good. So right after this, we had the stitches removed and we talked to the vet and said that we didn't think she was doing all that well. And he suggested we do some massaging and exercises to make her actually use that leg. And we spent some more money. I forgot to mention, this is a very expensive operation and it got more and more expensive as we went along. But anyway, I'll cover that a little bit later. We got some exercises for her to do and we're hoping that that would help, but they really didn't. So this is three weeks after the operation, looking slightly better. So four weeks in, we went south for the winter and we weren't happy with the progress she was making. So we went to a different vet for a second opinion. And he took new x-rays of her leg and said everything looked great. He agreed she was not doing as well as was expected. And in fact, he had a black lab who had had a TPLO two weeks prior walk in and out of their office like nothing was wrong. And I was like, holy crap, how come our dog's not like this? So here's four weeks in. Not very good. And you'll see she's starting to roll out on that leg. And here's five weeks. Gets out of bed, doesn't put any weight on her leg. So at five weeks, we started doing rehab kind of work at a place in Asheville. Very nice people. All the money and time we spent bringing her there really didn't help, unfortunately. Very, very disappointed. The people were fine. Just the, She just wasn't going to get any better, no matter how much rehab she had. So, hopping quite a bit at six weeks. And here's seven weeks. Do you get in there with her anymore? No. Oh, no. You're She's not in. Great. Come on, Aspen. Good girl. Of course, like any kid, when she gets out of school, she's gung-ho. 
So none of that worked very well. So at four months, we brought her back up north and we had the plate removed. So she had another major surgery and more swelling and more time to recuperate. Hi, I got a call yesterday from veterinary asking how Aspen was doing and I'm not sure. She won't eat. I put her dog food out and her... Oh, I, I had some um, stuff from when she had the rheumatoid toxicity thing. This uh, natural beef apple puree and some Ultramix Real Pumpkin Ultra Blend. And she won't eat that, but she will take her pills if I give them to her with turkey or ham. So she did start eating that day. Okay, so let's see how she's walking. Yesterday she was not putting any weight on this at all. Even with pain meds in the morning, and now she's doing better. So maybe this is coming along. I don't really know. So here she is seven days after plate removal, which you might think I should be very concerned that she might hurt herself, but apparently that bone is completely healed and removing the plate shouldn't really be a problem if she's rough and around like this. So I think she's walking significantly better since the plate was removed. Still doing a little hopping and skipping on that leg, but not too bad. So two weeks after the plate was removed, we went back up to have the stitches out and he convinced us to do more x-rays and a joint tap to make sure there was no infection. And there was no infection, as there never was. At that point, he said there really was nothing more he could do, and, which was very disappointing. He, and he recommended if uh, we weren't happy with the results, we go to some other specialist, which in my opinion kind of sucked. And here is the cost of this whole ordeal, $6,355, and that does not include any of the rehab in Asheville. So three weeks after the plate was removed, she's walking noticeably better, I think. So six months after the original surgery, we had her back hiking pretty regularly, but every now and then, she will come up lame again and hold that leg up for several days to a week, and then she'll be back to being able to walk again. It's terrible. And this just happened last week. We took a ride in the van, and I got out of the van, she got out of the van, and she must have stood up or something while I was driving. I didn't have an accident. I didn't go crazy. It just, I don't know, something happened during the van ride. And... Now she's like this again. And here she is a week later walking fairly well again. It's so sad. And she still struggles to get up without using that leg. And hops on it a little bit. Doesn't quite put full pressure on it until we're out walking. It's really, really disappointing. There were other options I could have chosen besides the TPLO. I think tightrope would have been the best, or maybe just a traditional fix. She has never been anywhere near as good as she was prior to the surgery, which is just heartbreaking to me because every day I watch her limp at some point, and then there's these times when she'll three-leg it for a week. We're really limited on what we can do with her, and it's very sad. Oh, one thing I forgot. If anybody has an opinion on this. Our vet who did this operation never does a meniscus release. The guy down in Asheville who looked at Aspen, who had done the black lab, who walked out of there like nothing was wrong, had done a meniscus, meniscus release and usually does. It. That has bothered me since I found out about what a meniscus release is. And the vet that we had do the surgery says he equates it to malpractice. But I'm curious what other people might think, if anybody has an opinion. And watching this video, how her right rear leg kind of bows out to the side every step and has a little snap to it. I am curious as to whether that is a meniscus problem or something else. Anyway, thanks for watching. My whole point of this video is I hope this is a rare occurrence. 
but I would think long and hard before I ever did a TPLO to a dog again. It's just such a drastic operation when there's other things like the tightrope and the traditional, which are so much less invasive. And I'd definitely consider them first. Thanks for watching.